Good morning. How are you doing? Today is Thursday, July the 9th, and I didn't get started there. I forgot to bring my microphone over. So now we've got the microphone, and uh, maybe you can hear me now that I have the microphone. Uh, our uh, It's Thursday, July the 9th, 2020. It's our morning devotion. We title our morning devotions, Growing Closer, and our goal and uh, what we strive for is to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, yesterday I said something about the most important question about God is not, is there a God, but has that God revealed himself to us? Now, that is so important because you've got to understand that if we don't have a revelation of God, uh, from God of what he is like, his attributes and his characteristics, what he does, then we create what we think those attributes ought to be, and we create our own God, and we end up with something like uh, Allah. Uh, for example, there are people who say, well, Yahweh God, Jehovah God, and Allah God are the same God. They really are not, not at all. The whole God of the Quran, the God of Islam, is a creation of Muhammad and all of the mullahs and all of the people who came along after him. And if you look at the attributes and the character of Allah, they are not at all like the attributes and the character of our God, Jehovah. So anytime somebody says we all worship the same God uh, and they say Allah is the same as Jehovah, that is just wrong, wrong, wrong. And that just goes to push the importance of having a revelation from God of what he is like, of what his attributes are. And that's the reason it's so important for us to understand that in the Bible, he teaches us that we can have a relationship with him. You know, we can look at creation and we can surmise that behind all of creation, there is a creator, and uh, which, which is a great thing. Uh, the, the Bible tells us that the heavens are telling the glory of God and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. But the question is, does he have a name? What's he like? Does he know me? Can I know him? Does he care about me? Does he have a plan for my life? And the Bible is God's revelation from God of truth and about God of what we would not otherwise have known. We saw yesterday how God, after uh, long ago, spoke to the fathers by prophets in many ways, and these last days has spoken to us by his Son. And all that we know about the Son, we know because the Bible gives us that information. And so as we today look, uh, I, I want you to understand Understand, I can only know God as he shows himself to me. And as Christians, we believe that the Bible is God's way of showing himself to us. Now, here's where the real question comes in, because this comes to the matter of the fact, are we, uh, are we saying that we believe God, but practically we, we are atheists. We live as if there is no God. We live as if there is no revelation of God. Most Christians I know pay lip service to the inspiration of the Bible. They say they believe it all cover to cover but they don't see all of it as applicable. So are we going to be serious about applying the truths of the Bible to the way that we live our lives? The question comes, what has the final say in your life? When, when your back is against the wall and you have to make a decision as to how you're going to conduct yourself, where are you going to turn? What are you going to depend upon for that decision? Because you must understand what the Bible is and what the Bible does. The psalmist we saw yesterday gave us that wonderful passage uh, that, that we want to use, and that is, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And um, we saw that yesterday. I thought I had it, but I, I don't. So I want us to use that for just a second, the idea of the Bible being a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That is Psalm 119 and verse 105. Now, I'm pretty sure I have that in here. I have a lot of scriptures that I put up on the screen today, but for some reason, I do not see that one. So let's, we should use the Bible as a lamp and as a light. Let's, let's think about what it means, those two things. First of all, we use the Bible as a guide to what we believe. That's what it means when it says a lamp unto our feet. Now, a lamp is what gives light. 
A lamp is what uh, guides our way uh, in the dark. By the way, did you know the, the term Bible is not ever used in, in the book that we have? It never calls itself that. Luke gives us, uh, describes what we call the Bible. He's, he says, beginning with Moses and with the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all scriptures. And the word that it uses to describe itself is that word scriptures. Now, the, the Greek term for scripture is the word graphe, which is where we get our English word graph, and it means that which is written. So when God got ready to reveal himself to us, he didn't just think what he wanted to tell us. He didn't verbally speak that message only. He didn't reveal it through dreams or clouds. He wrote his word down. Uh, you know, that's every now and then I'll say, I want to see it in writing. I, I don't want to just hear it. I don't want to just think it. I want to see it in writing. And I believe the reason that God did that is he wanted us to have the absolute uh, word of God in our hands so that there is no doubt about what was said or what was there. Uh, speaking of the very same scripture, uh, and then uh, the graphe, we know that Jesus said, do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I didn't come to abolish it, but to fill it up or to fulfill it. And Jesus, if our Lord lived under the authority of God's word, uh, don't you think we should? I mean, even if his life in the Bible says the Bible was the last word, and we could understand that Second Timothy passage that we looked at yesterday, and we need to remember that all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness. The New Living Translation puts it this way, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens out and teaches us to do what is right. It's God's way of preparing us in every way, fully equipped for every good thing God wants us to do. Now, I realize that the New Living translation is a paraphrase. They say it's a translation, but it's more of a paraphrase. But I think that's a very good way of translating what we have there. So if you have the New Living Translation for 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it's really excellent there. Paul wrote to Timothy, a New Testament pastor of a New Testament church in a New Testament city, and he told Timothy, that the Old Testament scripture was sufficient for every aspect of his life and for, for the church. And so if the Old Testament was good enough for Timothy and his church, how much more the completed revelation that we have is enough for us? Now, I want us to understand why it's so important that the Bible guide us in what we believe. Because there are two ditches that are out there that I see people take one of the, of the two. And, and we have to guard against this. And, and I will tell you those ditches are liberalism on one side, and on the other side, an overemphasis on grace or license. And the Bible warns against both of those, the legalist as well as those we'll call license. You remember that Jesus one time warned against the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, you've got to understand the Pharisees and the Sadducees were two different political parties within Judaism. The Pharisees were the legalists, and the Sadducees were those who put too much emphasis on license, do what you want to do. And the Pharisees, uh, legalism occurs when you substitute your opinions for God's word. And you, it's, it's more important to the legalist whether you use hymnals or you use things on the screen, whether men wear suits or whether they have open collars and wear jeans. And I want you to understand that everybody has a right to their opinion. I'm not saying that. But no one has the right to elevate their opinion above the status of Scripture. And when that happens, you fall into that ditch of legalism. And uh, everybody can have their opinion, but look, the Bible uh, is very clear 
uh, on these things. But the Sadducees on the other side, their their problem was license. They didn't believe uh, in a lot of things. And, you know, the, the old joke was the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. That's what made them sad, you see. But uh, when the Christian gets away from the Bible as a guide, then you have a tendency to go one extreme or another. And if you're not careful, you come to the point in your mind where you just throw out the parts of the Bible that you don't agree with or that you uh, are, or what you think and what you believe becomes more important. The Bible, though, is not only a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Notice how the Bible relates both to our feet and to our path. The psalmist said in Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a man are established by the Lord and he delights in his ways. Uh, another way of putting that is the steps of God, of the godly person is directed by God and he delights in every detail of his life. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 20 has another important word for us. It says, walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. That's exactly why God gave us the Bible, so we know how to walk and what to do. James, over in James 1.22, is that song that we learned when we were in elementary school, uh, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only who deceive themselves. If you think about it, just about every single time that you fail, it's because you got out from under the authority of God and you began to make decisions without consulting God's word and without following the, the principles of God's word. The truth of the matter is this. You really can't live your life the way that God wants you to live your life unless you live it according to his word, unless you put yourself under the word. So asking that question, does the Bible, what does the Bible have to say about this? If, if we're going to be truly biblical Christians, we must not only use the Bible to guide what we believe. Here's the second thing. You've got to use the Bible to gauge how you behave. I get weary, I, I weary of these so-called experts, psychologists, sociologists, media, and all this bunch, who tell us how we ought to uh, listen to them because they're experts, and they try to tell us what's right and wrong. The problem is they don't have the same standard that I have in my life. And so it can be very, very dangerous for me because I am following their standard or am I following God's standard in his word? The only one who, who knows right from wrong is God, who is always right. And he's always right because he's God. And he's given us the book, the Bible, not only to help us tell the difference, but for us to know what is right and to avoid what is wrong. Uh, John Adams, the second president of the United States, kept a diary. And in the early days of the Republic, he wrote down his thoughts concerning the relationship of America to the Bible. And here's what he said. He said, suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book and every member should regulate his conduct by the precepts there exhibited. What a utopia, what a paradise this region would be. Folks, the Bible is sufficient. If everybody lived according to the word of God, <laughs> then we could probably reduce the police force, but everybody doesn't. We don't put ourselves under the scripture. And the question is, what role does the Bible play in your life? How often do you consult it? Do you consult it for means of what you think about God? Do you consult it for means of your attitude and how you ought to be thinking and what you ought to be doing? You see, it is absolutely critical for us as we think about God, and we're going to talk about God later, and as we think about the Bible, what we think of the Bible. Now, tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you a few of the facts and a few of the reasons that I believe the Bible is the Word of God. Now, it can get, it, it moves beyond uh, just the emotional and moves beyond uh, into to some practical, factual thinking and reasoning and logic uh, tomorrow morning as to why I believe the Bible is the Word of God and why we ought to let it direct and guide our paths. So, in the meantime, Remember that if you don't follow what the Bible says about God, you're going to end up with a God that is not 
who God really is because you've not followed his revelation of what he's shown himself to be to us through his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we don't have to wonder about whether you're just or right or loving, that you have revealed it to us through the scripture, the graphe, the things that are written, and you have revealed it to us through your darling son, our sweet savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that your Holy Spirit would take the scripture that we have seen this morning and take the words, Lord, and convict each and every heart as each and every heart needs it, because we know that all of us need something a little different. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would, would strive with every one of us in those areas of deficiency. And Lord, that we would submit to him and submit to your word that the Bible truly may be a guide for our lives and for our hearts. Father, I pray for each and every person who listens or watches this video, and I pray that you would bless them as they follow you and bless them as they seek to learn more about you and to grow in your grace and knowledge. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Well, we're glad that you're with us. You know, I don't, I don't know why I forgot to bring the microphone over before I started this morning. I guess sometimes I'm sort of like the absent-minded professor, and uh, I begin to just talk to you as if you're always here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we do look forward to our times in the, in the morning when we speak with you. Um, so much to say, we could spend an awful lot of time talking about the Bible and God and these doctrines. And I, I have a tendency sometimes to get a little bit deeper than, uh, than some of you want. So uh, converse with me, get back with me, private message me, email me, jpierce at toweringoaks.org, and let me know where you are in these. And maybe if there's areas of question and misunderstanding about the Bible or about God and about these things, if you would do that, that would uh, I'd be more than happy to try to answer your questions and do, do so scripturally from what the Bible says, um, because our Bible is our final authority. And when we move away from that, we're really in trouble. Uh, Cheryl, good to see you on this morning, and Miss Starr, you as well. Ovi, glad that you joined us today, and John and Gina, uh, good to see you with us. Uh, Frida and Archie, Archie, hope you're doing well, hope you don't have a lot of pain. Good morning, Miss Tanya, we still are praying for you daily and hoping that things are moving the right direction. Miss Patsy Brown from South Carolina, glad that you are with us today. One day I'm going to meet all you folk over there in the Carolinas. Uh, good morning to my wife. Thank you for coming down and telling me I forgot to turn the microphone on. Uh, Brian, good to see you this morning. Uh, glad that you're with us. Uh, let's see, Carol. Carol and Bill, good to see you this morning. And Terry Henry, one more day before you have to go back to work. Good to see you, Terry. We love you, guy. Uh, Dan and Dixie, good morning. Glad that you're with us. Robin, good to see you on here. Now, are you South Carolina or North Carolina, Robin? Either way, it's good to see you on here. Uh, I muted, I unmuted. Okay, that's at the very beginning. I forget that these things go from the latest to the first. And so these are the ones telling me no sound, and I'm just now seeing them. Okay, I get a lot more comments when I don't have sound, don't I? Uh, good morning, Amanda. Glad that you're with us. And Deanna. Glad that you're here. Dorothy and Nelson, good to see you. Rick, good morning. Uh, the, and I'm glad that I, it wouldn't have done much good for you just to look at me, so I am glad that we got it where you could hear. Wade and Norma Townsend, good to see that you joined us. And Miss Diane Musgrove, glad that, it's, that you're with us. Lori Summy, uh, we're still praying for you. And Lori, if you'll let us know how you're doing, we appreciate it. And uh, Ms. Richard, or Abel, uh, I don't, how do you pronounce your first name? Uh, would, from Virginia, it's good to have you on here as well. Glad that you have joined us. By the way, if you didn't get to uh, watch our Sweet Soul music last night, we talked about the 72nd Psalm and praying for godly leadership. And I hope that you will uh, we'll go back and listen to that. Dixie, your friend from Orlando is watching. Shirley, hi, Shirley. It's good to see you. We're glad that you're watching. Uh, if, if you're not watching on the Towering Oaks Pastors page, then I don't see your name. Uh, Shelly was telling me last night that she had 13 people on her watch party. 
that I didn't get to see, didn't know they were watching because they were on that watch party rather than here. So uh, those of you that we get to see on here, uh, uh, that's we want to say hello to you anyway. If if you're on here, we'll speak to you. And Diane, what's this? Sad you see is how I remember the sad you sees. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a good way to remember the name uh, there. I always uh, remember the, the young man who fell out of the window when Paul was preaching and got a little bit long-winded. And people say, how do you remember his name? His name was Eutychus. And I always tell people, Eutychus too, if you had fallen out of a window. And so <laughs> there's some neat little tricks to, to remember stuff like that. Well, we need to get off of here and get some things going. And uh, I know all of you have a lot to do. Good morning, Scott. Glad to see that you're on with us again this morning. I pray that God will bless you and keep you in just about in every way. And know that you're in our hearts, you're on our minds. And whenever the Holy Spirit brings your name to our mind during the day, we, we say a prayer for you. Uh, pray for our nation. Pray for our churches. So many churches don't know where to go and where to turn during this time. And we need discernment. We need God's leaders to have discernment in what to do. Boy, I need that. The people at Towering Oaks and leadership, we need the discernment. And we need the direction that God wants us to go. So pray for all churches and all leaders there that we can minister to the flock and be there for the people. Well, I hope you have a great day. God bless you. Bye-bye.